to the latest Hurricane Tracker app video update recorded Wednesday, August 31st, 2016 at 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Well, we have a lot going on in the map. We have a couple of systems out in the eastern Pacific. Uh, one may threaten Hawaii. And, of course, we have tr newly formed Tropical Storm Hermine in the southeast Gulf of Mexico. Tropical Depression 8 still chugging along off the mid-Atlantic coast. And major hurricane Gaston out in the central Atlantic. I want to first start over uh, for you folks over in Hawaii here in the eastern Pacific we do have Hurricane Madeline. Uh, as of the latest advisory from the Central Pacific Hurricane Center, it has weakened considerably since yesterday. There's some upper level wind shear. Let me go over to the satellite. Um, you can see blowing the clouds from southwest to northeast. So this is great news, for, especially for the big island of Hawaii, where a hurricane warning is in effect. Winds are down to 80 miles per hour. Expect those to weaken a little bit, and it's moving towards the west at 14, 14 miles per hour. The center... Is going to go just south of the big island, but especially in Hilo, we could still see tropical storm force winds, maybe even approaching hurricane strength, depending upon how much this weakens. So um, pretty, pretty unusual to have a hurricane that strong approaching Hawaii. Let's take a look at major hurricane Gaston in the central Atlantic and look at the eye on Gaston. That is a, a very well-developed hurricane. The winds are at 115 miles per hour. And it's moving safely out into the open Atlantic. And finally, the rest of our video update, we're going to focus on newly formed Tropical Storm Hermine. The hurricane hunters were out uh, flying through the system. They did, they did find uh, Tropical Storm Force winds of at least 40 miles per hour. Now, when the next update comes out in a couple of hours from the Hurricane Center, we could see this bumped up to 45, maybe even 50 miles per hour based on some of the latest data. Um, the center is located about uh, 415 miles west-southwest of Tampa, Florida. We still have a hurricane watch in effect for the Florida Gulf Coast from the Anclody River to Indian Pass. We have a tropical storm warning in effect from the Anclody River, River all the way over to the Walton Bay County line near the Panama City area. Then for the northeast Florida coast and the Georgia coast, we have a tropical storm watch in effect from Marineland, Florida to Altamaha Sound in Georgia. The main impacts with this system are going to be wind, rain, and storm surge. Uh, we could see, of course, uh, hurricane force winds along the coast if this system intensifies, as some of the models are showing. Uh, right now, the National Hurricane Center, I think their official peak wind forecast is um, about 65 or 70 miles per hour. Um, we could see tropical storm conditions well inland in the north and northeast Florida, as well as southeast Georgia in the Carolinas. So if you're in those regions, prepare for possible prolonged power outages, especially to the south and east of the storm. We could see water rises up to five feet in some areas and rainfall along the path of the system uh, could be up to five to 10 inches, again, mainly to the north and east of where the center makes landfall. I want to go over here to the National Hurricane Center uh, forecast map. Let me pull that up here. So you can see the system is going to continue moving to the north with a turn towards the north-northeast, and landfall should occur somewhere near the Apalachicola area, maybe a little west or a little east of there. The latest guidance is trending further towards the west. Uh, we'll have to see if those trends keep up through the, through the overnight model cycles. But uh, you can see the path is pretty straightforward into the Big Bend region of Florida, uh, in through north and northeast Florida, southeast Georgia, and then I think uh, this, this cone will be shifted a little further west, kind of into the eastern part of the Carolinas with the next advisory. And those of you in the northeast, the weather pattern is setting up so that this storm may get trapped or blocked right off of the coast. And the European run from this afternoon even had the center going in near Cape May, New Jersey. Uh, may not be much, uh, many tropical characteristics left at that point, but the wind field could be a little larger as it transitions uh, to a non-tropical system. Chance of tropical storm force winds are about 50-60% now across the Gulf Coast of Florida. And if we look at the radar, the initial surge of moisture is coming into the west central part of Florida. And that will continue. And we could see that rain go all the way up the east coast. And again, I think these rainfall estimates will be nudged towards the west with time. Uh, for you folks in Charlotte, uh, Raleigh, you definitely need some rain. You may end up getting some rain from the system. I know we're based in Atlanta. We've had a very dry summer. We definitely don't want uh, hurricane or tropical storm force winds this far inland, but we could use some rain. So we'll have to see 
how the track of the system plays out for the uh, parched regions of the um, southeast United States coast. So finally, let's take a look at the storm itself. It takes a couple moments for these satellites to load. Here is the uh, NOAA servers have been getting hit pretty hard lately with everybody checking out the storm. But you look at the visible satellite earlier today, there was a lot of convective activity, uh, especially right around the center. That has decreased a little bit. But you can see in the last couple of frames, uh, especially on the infrared, looks like some new storms are beginning to build around the center. And if we look at the water vapor, there is a little bit of dry air to the north and west of the system, but not much to really get entrained and prevent any intensification. So, um, you know, the National Hurricane Center puts out the official forecast, but based on everything we're seeing, uh, not only with the real-time conditions, but the latest guidance, we could see a 75, 80 mile per hour Cat 1 hurricane make landfall Friday morning. Of course, if that were to occur, that would end the 10 plus year drought of no hurricanes impacting Florida. So lots to watch over the next couple of days. Actually, next several days, this system is going to linger at least through early next week. And believe it or not, we actually saw a couple of model runs in the long term that have this system doing loops off the coast and uh, continuing to batter the mid-Atlantic and the outer banks of North Carolina. So lots to watch. We'll be here uh, at the Hurricane Tracker app through all of it with you. And uh, thanks for tuning in. If you don't have the Hurricane Tracker app, check it out. You can search Hurricane Tracker on the App Store and uh, very in-depth information on tropical systems. We not only do these video updates, but we do discussions, uh, usually once a day, sometimes a little more frequent here in the app. We also do audio updates if you if you don't feel like reading anything, just want to get the latest. And, of course, all the uh, official tracking information you expect as far as, uh, you know, official data from the National Hurricane Center, all the computer models, and much, much more. So thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great evening, and uh, thanks for watching.